Currently for the IT teams, they have no access to machines as they are all being used to work remotely. What this means is that when an issue arises, they won't be able to directly repair the issue. They will have to talk inexperienced users through how to maintain their devices. There is also the issue of new systems which have been implemented to enable remote working, which they are learning to maintain themselves now and also have to maintain the old systems at the same time, which increases their workload. Clearly, cyber criminals are well aware of the fact that more of us are working from home at the moment. Whilst we haven't necessarily seen an uptick in cybercrime, what we have seen is phishing emails, for example, being much more customised. So they'll use things like the coronavirus as a hook. It could be that there's some important health guidance on a document that they want you to download. Maybe there's an application that acts as a coronavirus tracking map that they want you to download. You can see how these things would be effective given the fears that they're trying to exploit. Certainly, we're continuing to see a rise in cybercrime each year. However, cyber criminals will adapt and change their tactics to current situations. Um, for example, the current COVID-19 pandemic um, is one of them. Phishing will always continue to be a threat. Um, COVID-19 just gives cyber criminals a new hook to lure their victims in. As a business, you really need to train your staff regularly and keep them up to date on the late latest threats and attacks. Think about implementing a no blame culture where staff are actively encouraged to report to IT if they've clicked on a suspect link. It's much better to know sooner um, and be able to run relevant antivirus scans to detect any malicious activity before it's often too late. Um, at the end of the day, your staff are your human firewall and ultimately you want them to be your strongest link in your company. Now the things to look out for with these emails to make sure our staff don't fall victim to them. Obviously we can let them know about campaigns as and when we become aware of them ourselves, making sure we communicate threats that we already know about. But a general awareness of things to look for, for example, checking the email address. Does it look like you'd expect it to look? Hovering your mouse over any links or buttons in an email to make sure the link you're actually heading to looks like you'd expect it to look. And then simple things like spelling and grammar within phishing emails. These are all the sort of things we encourage people to check to make sure they're happy an email is legitimate before they take action with it. Well, if you're sitting there with an email which you think this, this isn't quite right, something doesn't feel right with this email, you can report it to the National Cyber Security Centre's Suspicious Email Reporting Service. And the address for that is report at phishing.gov.uk. If a cyber attack were to happen, there is a serious risk of the IT team being overwhelmed as they struggle to respond to the incident remotely. And this is why it is absolutely critical that you have a step-by-step -step response plan, which will help enable a rapid and coherent reaction to the incident. Um, contact Action Fraud for all cyber and fraud related crime. And if you are experience, experiencing a live cyber attack, you can do this over the phone. Um, or you can report online directly to actionfraud.police.uk. Um, sometimes you might have to inform the Information Commissioner's Office, um, certainly if you have suffered data loss as a result of an attack. Um, does your company have a specific reporting procedure? Um, do you have a, a strategy in place? Um, you've got to also consider your legal, your HR, your PR teams. They will all have a part to play in your incident response plan. Remember, if the worst should happen, it's not just a problem for IT. Everybody in your organisation, from the most junior level of staff up to board level, should be aware of your cyber incident response plan. Your incident response plan should be unique to your organisation, but there are five key things which it should cover, and those are to contain, preserve, eradicate, recover and learn. And we'll go through what each of those means now. Contain, this is where you limit the damage to your organisation by preventing the spread of an incident. Preserve is where you are preserving the log or audit files to help identify the root cause of an incident. Eradicate is taking the necessary steps to resolve the incident. And recover is returning the organisation to its normal operating state. And the last one here is to learn because we need to review the incident and improve or create new measures to help mitigate any further incidents in the future. 
You should also have defined roles for key stakeholders, as well as a clear communications plan to make sure that everybody is informed at all points. Thank you.